Nuclear power is one option to free humanity from our dependence on fossil fuels for energy. Unlike oil, coal, or gas, generating nuclear power emits no CO2, though it must be said that it does create radioactive waste, some of which has to be stored securely for thousands of years. And unlike wind or solar, it can produce energy on demand. So a few countries are aggressively pursuing nuclear power, and some have even designed ships with reactors to serve as mobile power plants. Is this idea ingenious or a disaster waiting to happen? China is reportedly starting construction on a floating nuclear power station set to be seaworthy by 2021, while Russia has already built a barge with two 35 megawatt reactors. It's expected to be hooked up to the grid in the far northeast region of Chukotka by December of 2019. Now, I know there are some keywords in there that set off alarm bells for some of you, particularly the words Russia and nuclear power. One of the biggest disasters in the history of nuclear energy occurred in the former Soviet Union in 1986, when a reactor in Chernobyl exploded. For some, this forever tainted nuclear energy, and critics of the floating power plant have dubbed it Chernobyl on ice. But nuclear power at sea actually has some advantages. Land-based power plants need to be built by sources of water for cooling, which can be valuable real estate. Building on land can also require a lengthy construction process and face backlash from locals. And of course, once a plant is built, it can't go anywhere. A floating reactor can be tugged to a new location to supply power if the need arises, or can bring power to remote parts of the world. Of course, putting a reactor on a boat is not without its own challenges. First and most obvious is the motion of the ocean. The cooling system has to be designed to keep the reactor temperatures at safe levels even as the whole system pitches and rolls around. There's also the problem of containment. Land-based reactors can be built with heavy concrete containment vessels over them to prevent radioactive material from escaping in the event of a major pipe break. On a floating vessel, experts say solving the containment issue makes the ship heavier, meaning the ship would have to be larger to support the weight. It's either that or saving weight at the expense of robust containment. The good news for anyone losing sleep over this is we have a lot of experience with atomic power at sea. The first nuclear-powered vessel, the submarine USS Nautilus, launched in 1954. Since then, militaries around the world have built hundreds of nuclear-powered submarines and surface vessels. The US Navy has a stellar safety record with over 50 years of operation and no radiological accidents. The Russian Navy, on the other hand, had some teething issues, and a number of serious accidents resulted in over 20 radiation deaths. Since the late 1970s, though, safety and reliability became a priority, and their track record improved. There are also several Russian-operated icebreakers that rely on nuclear power that are in service right now. So with modern naval reactor design and years of accumulated experience in mind, some experts, like the former head of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, Dale Klein, think fears about a floating Chernobyl are overblown. If the design proves safe and effective, maybe it will lead to more offshore reactor designs. MIT even floated their own idea for one back in 2015, and yes, the pun was intended. Their concept was to combine a nuclear reactor with the same kind of cylindrical platforms we use for some floating oil rigs. Think of those chlorine dispensers you see bobbing in a backyard pool, only giant and with a nuclear reactor inside. The MIT researchers believe they could be mass-produced and deployed easily, making them much less costly than current land-based plants. And putting them over deep water and at least 13 kilometers offshore can reduce the threat from tsunamis or earthquakes. They're still looking into the idea and hope the first ones are operational by 2030. If they live up to expectations, offshore nuclear power could one day be a huge contributor to the fight against climate change. And one more fact before you go, while nuclear power is one way to reduce CO2 emissions and dependency on fossil fuels, the Russian floating nuclear power unit is being sent to a remote area of Russia to power the extraction of fossil fuels. Oh, the irony. If you like this video, check out this one on how nuclear modular reactors could change the future of energy. Make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you next time on Seeker.